Hello everyone and welcome to another Gottfried Roundtable. Today I'm going to talk to you about a very interesting topic in polymeriology. Let me give you a tip. Have you ever heard of diaswell or melt flow instabilities in the form of shark skin or gross melt fracture? Yes, you're right. We are talking about normal stresses. I'm Masoud from Gottfried Application Department. Normal stresses are commonly measured in rotational rheometers in transient shear experiment. The sample is placed between power plate or cone and plate geometry, and depending on the shear rate, some amount of time is needed until the stress values reach to the steady state. However, the maximum reachable shear rate in this experiment is around 30 per second for polyolefins. This shear rate is much lower than the shear that the material experiences during polymer processing operations such as extrusions or um, injection molding. In cooperation with the University of Karlsruhe, we developed a new die in which you can simultaneously measure a steady state shear viscosity and a steady state first normal stress difference. The die consists of two parts, a slit part and a radial part. A steady state shear viscosity is measured in the slit part of the die. No backlit correction is needed since the pressure transducers are installed in the die. As you can see from the graph, the values of steady state shear viscosity taken from the slit part of the die is compared with the steady state shear viscosity taken from the capillary dies after proper corrections. In the radial part of the die, on the other hand, you can measure first normal stress. As you can see, the values of first normal stress difference measured by cone and plate geometry at low shear rates is compared with the values of first normal stress difference taken from the radial part of the die at high shear rates. As an example, four LDPs are shown here. They show instabilities at different shear rates. Compared to the values of first normal stress difference versus shear rate, you can see that the material which has higher values of first normal stress difference shows instability at low shear rates. Normal stress values can provide you with very valuable information for flow simulations. For example, if you want to predict diaswell or change of a profile shape after extrusion. For further study, I refer you to the link below. It's an open access article in which you can find all the derivations and equations. In case of any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us. Thank you very much for watching our Gutford Roundtable today. Stay tuned for the next episodes. Have a nice day.